Okay, so today, adding and subtracting rational expressions, as you can see, they're all in like a fraction format. Um, something I'm gonna quickly go over because it ties everything together up here. Just write down, add, subtract, fractions. Okay, when you learned to add or subtract fractions, you were given numbers like this, 1 fourth plus 2 fourths equals, and then when you add fractions, you look for having the same denominator, and if you have the same denominator, you can just add the num numerator. So 1 plus 2 would be 3, so the answer to this would be 3 fourths. If for whatever reason you didn't have a common denominator, so let's say you're given 1 third plus 2 sixths, then you would have to make sure that you have a common denominator before adding the numerators. The way you would get a common denominator is you'd multiply this by something to get it to look like this. So we'd multiply this by two to get six, and whatever you do to the bottom number, you have to do to the top. So then you would rewrite it as two six plus two six and get four six. And then of course, simplify if you could. And that's essentially what we're going to be doing. Yeah, two thirds, sorry. Okay, two thirds. And that's essentially what we're going to be doing just with more complicated numbers. Okay, so for number one, this expression here, we can see that the two fractions already have like denominators. So we don't really have to do much with that, which is nice. So we're just gonna add this to this and I'm gonna write it all out. 4x squared plus x squared minus 5x. And then that'll all go over x minus one. Now we're going to combine like terms, which we can combine the 4x squared and the x squared to get 5x squared minus 5x over x minus 1. Whoa. And now we're going to simplify if we can. So this right here, I can take out a 5x out of both of those terms. So I'm going to take out the 5x and rewrite it x minus 1 over x minus 1. And now that we're dealing with just multiplication, we can cancel stuff. So this would cancel out, and we're just left with 5x. So our answer here is 5x. So you'll see me kind of bouncing in between colors. If you have two colors to use, that would probably be best as like you're crossing stuff out so you can see what's going on. Okay. Number two, now we have three terms. Luckily, the denominators are all x plus two, so we don't have to worry about anything there. So I'm gonna write this all out. Notice that there is a subtraction symbol here, so I'm gonna apply that subtraction to both of those terms as I write it out. So four x minus one minus x plus seven plus one minus four x. Did I do something wrong? No, I, it is. So because of the subtraction here, it's subtracting like the whole thing. So minus x and then plus seven changes the sign. And now we can cancel stuff by like terms. So four x minus four x, that's just zero, that cancels. Negative one and positive one, nothing. And then we're left with negative x plus seven over x plus two. Okay, next. Uh, number three. Okay, now they gave us something where the denominators are not the same. So we have to make them the same. Um, we want a number, so we want to multiply this by something so that it matches this and vice versa. 21 would be the least common multiple, so if I multiply this by 3, 
I will get 21y to the fourth power. And if I multiply this by 7y squared, then I can get it to match 21y to the fourth power. But whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So I'm also going to multiply this by 3 and this by 7y to the second power. So 3 times 3 is 9. So I get 9 over 21y to the fourth power minus 14y squared over 21y to the fourth power. And then the last step is just to put it all together. 9 minus 14y squared over 21y to the fourth power. And that's as much as I can do. Um, I can't cancel out y's because of the subtraction. If it was all multiplication, then I could cancel factors out. But because of the subtraction, that's it. And no, that doesn't look much simpler than the beginning. I know it's not as satisfying, but it is what it is. Um, because of the subtraction. If it was all multiplication, then you could. OK. Number four. Now, as you can see, different denominators again, x plus 4 and x minus 2. In this case, what we're going to do is multiply this side by x minus 2 and this side by x plus 4. And whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So I'm going to write this out, negative 5, x minus 2. Then I'm going to distribute the 5 here and then the 4x here. It's just what we did here. We had to multiply this by x minus 2 to get it to match over here. And we multiplied this by x plus 4 to get it to match. And now I need to put this in a better format, combine like terms. I'm going to put the negative 4x squared out front. Combine this and this over x minus 2, x plus 4. And that's as simple as I can make it. OK. If the 4x squared was multiplied by the 21x, could we put the X's together to make it cubed or is that a thing that could happen? Um like four x squared times twenty one x? Yeah. Yeah, because like four times x times x times twenty one times x. It'd just be a big number. Cube, yeah, right? you could do okay. yeah, four times like that. Okay. Number five, um, formatting got kind of messed up over here. There should be more space in between those problems. So here's the solution. We're just going to make a box for seven over here. And five is going to go in this box. OK, um, so 
the same idea. These get a little bit more complicated, but we're just bringing out factors, um, seeing what we can simplify. So here I have one over this, and I'm going to break this up into factors. Oh, I was just zooming out so everyone could see. Okay. Okay. Um, so breaking this up into factors, 1 over <coughs> x plus 4 times x plus 1. So two numbers that multiply to 4 and add to 5, there's that, plus 5x over 3x plus 1. I just factored out the 3. Now I need the denominators to match. So I'm going to multiply and put an x plus 4 here. Whatever I do to the bottom, do to the top. And then over on this side, I can multiply it by 3. And whatever you do to the bottom, do to the top. And now the denominators match. And I'm going to rewrite it. So 3 times 1 is 3. Plus 5x squared. Plus 20x. I'm going to rewrite this in standard form. over the denominator 3 times x plus 4 times x plus 1. And we're done. Okay, number six, same thing with formatting. I'm just going to make a box for eight and then solve six over here. And then somebody's going to ask me to zoom. Okay. Um, so same process. I'm breaking stuff up into factors to see what I have to work with. X over... And then from here, I need an x plus 3 on this side. And then I need an x minus 2 over here. Then I'm going to distribute as I write it all out x squared minus 2x can combine this and this to get negative 4x squared this and this negative 17x over x minus 2 x plus 3 x plus 2. You don't have to expand the bottom part? No, yeah, we can just leave it. At this point, we're just practicing the same thing over and over. Like, there's nothing new here. So, number seven, same thing. We're going to factor this and see what we're working with. So x minus 1 over negative 6. So, negative 3 and 2 would multiply to negative 6, add to negative 1.
then over here I need an x minus 3 so I'm going to multiply this by x minus 3 and then on this side I'm going to multiply this whole thing by 5 And eight, same deal. Factors be negative three and two, y over y minus three, y plus two minus. Yikes, I'm running out of room. Should we call it? Let's see. Add a y plus 3 here. y plus 3. Ooh, this is getting too crowded. Okay, scratch number 8. No need for that kind of frustration. <laughs> okay, so that is all. You can have the rest of class, which is a lot of time to do your homework. If you finish your homework, you can go back and do yesterday's homework if you didn't get to finish it. Um, also work in Khan Academy. If you're done with both homeworks and at least eight Khan Academies, then you can ask at your phone once you're done.